Hola, bienvenidos. Welcome to the Spanish channel and Grammar Checkpoint 12. Today we are going to be learning all about the very pesky perfect tense. Now I have to be honest, out of all the tenses I have to teach uh, as a teacher, the perfect is probably one of my least favourite to try and get my students to understand and I'm going to try my absolute best today. Um, the perfect tense, it's a type of past tense and it's uh, a compound tense. Now a compound is made up of more than one thing, more than one item. Uh, that is the case with this tense. It's actually made up of two consecutive conjugated verbs, which I'm going to show you examples of in a minute because that actually sounds quite complicated. So in English, here are some examples of what a perfect tense sounds like. And I'm going to just choose some regular verbs. I have played. I have visited. I have enjoyed. You have decided. Notice we are changing the pronoun now from the I to the you. Um, you have decided. She has believed. He has greeted. We have gifted. You have all discussed. They have closed. So the first question for you is how is this tense formed in English for regular verbs? I'll come back to you shortly. Have a think about it. So there really is no easy answer for this, but here's our first verb to have. And PP is what I call um, the past participle. I don't know. I prefer calling it PP. Um, so how do we form this in English? We start with our pronoun. Let's take I. We're going to conjugate the verb to have. I have. And we are then going to add our past participle. Now, if you take a verb like play, how do we make that into a past participle? Well, we add ED. So you have I have played. And then as we change our pronoun, so you, we conjugate to have, you have, and let's think of another example. Let's take the verb to listen. How would I make that a past participle in English? I would add ed. I, uh, you have listened. There you go. That's another example of the perfect tense. Let's take our third person singular. So that is going to be the pronoun she or he. She has, that's our conjugation of to have, she has. And let's take another example. Let's go with the example of to enjoy. She has enjoy. What do we do to make this a past participle in English? We add ed. She has enjoyed. So that's how we form the perfect tense using regular verbs in English. Again, the conjugation of to have plus your past participle, meaning you take your infinitive verb, for example, play, listen, enjoy, and you add ed. That's for regular verbs. For irregular verbs, and there are many in English, let me give you some examples. You wouldn't say, for example, for the perfect tense, I have said, uh, because your initial impression would be, well, we need to add ed to the end. No, to say is irregular. We're actually going to say said. What do we do with do? I have dude. No, I have done. I have thinked. No, I have thought. And what about eat? I have eated. I have ate. No, I have eaten. Okay, so we do have a lot of irregulars in English and we're going to see what we do with those. Uh, equivalent in Spanish as well. Going back to this page, can you see how that works now in practice? So here we have verb one, which has been conjugated. To have becomes I have. We then have our, what do we call that? A PP, a past participle, where we add ED to the end of regular verbs. Played, visited, enjoyed, decided, and so on. And can you see now where we have some of these Irregulars. I have eaten, not eated. You have said, not you have said. She has thought, not she has thinked. He has given, not he has gaved. We have drunk, not we have drinked, uh, and so on. Quite tricky in English. We also need to be aware of when we use a tense such as the perfect in both English and Spanish and how it differs to our simple past known as the preterite. For example, yesterday I visited. Last year I went to. 
a few days ago I learned. These are all very specific um, dates, aren't they, when something happened. Whereas if you compare that to the perfect tense, you have words like recently. That doesn't say exactly when. I have always gone to. That's habitual, something that has taken place over time. This week I have learned. But, you know, there are seven days in the week, so when this week? So that's the key difference between those two tenses. So, how do you form this tense in Spanish, the perfect tense? Well, we're going to look at regular verbs to begin with. Here is our conjugation grid, which we'll be used to now. Uh, with our pronouns, I, you, she, he, that's the polite form for you. We, all of you, and they. Uh, nothing new there. And then we have, do you remember I said we have two verbs that have been conjugated? Because this is a compound tense, there are two verbs. We're going to start with the verb haber, which means to have. It's not the same as tener. Haber is used when you have two conjugated verbs uh, together. So I don't want anyone to be using tengo terminado for I have finished. No. We're going to use the conjugations for haber for this tense. He terminado. I have finished. So I have, you have, she has, we have, all of you have, and they have. To form our past participle, we take the infinitive verb, for example, terminar, AR verb, hablar, uh, to talk, AR verb, comer, ER verb, beber, uh, to drink, ER verb, vivir is an IR verb, to live. Disminuir is to diminish, uh, and that is also an IR verb. Now we take off the AR, IR, or ER and replace it with the following. So an AR verb we're going to replace with ADO, terminado, finished. Hablado, take off the AR and replace with ADO, hablado, talked. Comido, take off the ER and replace with IDO, eaten. Beber, take off the ER and add ido. Bebido, drunk. Vivir, take off the IR and replace with ido, just like ER verbs. Lived. And finally, disminuir, take off the IR and add ido. Uh, diminished. Let's just practice those in front of you. So if I wanted you to say, I have spoken, um, how would you go about saying that? He hablado. I have spoken. What about we have lived? We have lived. Hemos vivido. Hemos vivido. Um, she has finished. She has finished. That's going to be ha terminado. Ha terminado. They have eaten. They have eaten. Han comido. Han comido. And back over to you. So here again is our uh, conjugation grid with your two conjugated verbs. Let's have a look. I have started. So what I've done in brackets, if we want to say I have started, that's the verb haber, to have, when we use a compound tense. Uh, we need the verb to start, which is empezar. So, I have, have a look along your row, I, your, is a. Empezar, started, is our past participle. What did I say? We take away the a and we add ado. So, I have started is a empezado. Have a go at numbers two to five for me. Y listos, ready with our answers. Here we go. I have listened, he escuchado. I have decided, he decidido. Remember, that's an IR verb, and IR verbs go to ido in the past participle for decided. He decidido. I have decided. I have given, he dado. Take away the AR of dar, ad, ADO. I have given, he dado. I have improved, he mejorado. Take off the AR and add ADO. And let's see how you get on with the next one to six using a variety of pronouns now. You, she, he, we, uh, all of you and they. And I'll come back to you in about five minutes. Actually, no, you'll come back to me in five minutes. <laughs>
Good luck. Buena suerte. Y listos. Ready. Here we go. I'm going to leave those there for you to check against the pronoun, the conjugation of haber, whether it's a, as, a, hemos, habéis, an, and then your use of past participles. So that's how you form the perfect tense in Spanish using regular verbs. And we're going to have a look at some pesky irregular verbs now. So to form the perfect tense in Spanish, but this time using some irregular verbs, actually, we're still going to use the same column and conjugation of haber, I have, you have, and so on. That's not going to change. It's actually our past participles that are a little bit different. For example, poner, to put, is irregular. And therefore, we don't take off the er and add ido to uh, form the past participle. Ponido is not accurate. It doesn't exist in Spanish. To say I have put, you need to say a puesto. Puesto is the past participle. It is obviously highly irregular. Unfortunately, these are verbs we just have to learn. Ver, to see. If I want to say I have seen, a visto, not a vido. A visto, irregular. Hacer, we've seen hacer is uh, irregular in uh, other tenses as well, to do. If I want to say I have done, I'm going to say a hecho, not a hacido. Hecho is the correct past participle. Uh, escribir, to write. I have written is going to be a escrito. Um, volver, to return. I have returned a vuelto, not volvido. It's vuelto. And finally, to break, romper is roto, not rompido. So I have broken a roto. Okay, and on that note, have a go at numbers one to six for me practicing those regular verbs. Gracias. And ready for our answers. Las respuestas. Here we go. I have done a hecho. I have made a ah, e hecho because hacer means to do and to make. I have written a Escrito. You have returned. Has vuelto. They have seen. Han visto. And finally, we have broken. Hemos roto. I hope you managed all right with those. Muy bien. And that brings us to the end of our lesson on the perfect tense. Uh, certainly not easy. And if you have any questions or comments, please do make a note in the uh, comment section below for me. Otherwise, next time, uh, Grammar Point 13, we are going to be looking at another compound tense called the pluperfect. Until then, hasta luego.